Chapter 12 Method 10 of Mind Control Illusion of Time Time is an illusion, and not rooted in anything real. Focusing our attention on the past, which is completely gone and cannot be changed, is fruitless, we cannot do anything about the past. Focus on the future is to dwell in a state of anxiety over what may happen, this is equally as pointless, because the future is not here, it has not yet arrived. The power lies in the present moment awareness. Time is a spiritual currency. We say how we spend our time, indeed, it is a form of currency, because we get something in return for the quality of our time, and what we used to pay attention to. No man loses any other life than this which he now lives, nor lives any other than this which he now loses. The longest and shortest are thus brought to the same. For the present is the same to all, though that which perishes is not the same, and so that which is lost appears to be a mere moment. For a man cannot lose either the past or the future, for what a man has not, how can anyone take this from him? Marcus Aurelius Circular Movements of Astronomical Objects Defining Time The Earth rotates once daily upon its axis, a physical movement we measure. The month is based on the moon and its movements. The word month is based on the word moon. We base our year upon the revolution of the earth around the sun. This is another physical movement that is cyclical. Physical cyclical movements relate to our perception of time. Why is it necessary, and what does that do to the mind? What does that do to the perceptions? What does that do to the psychology of a person? Physical cyclical movements begin to paint the picture within the mind and perception of the world that these movements have always been this way, now and forever. It is a sense of eternity or unchangingness. Moreover, it starts to put the idea in people's minds that change is not possible, that there are just continual cycles that go on and on forever in one direction, not starting in the past proceeding through the present and proceeding to the future. Time-bound thinking The misperception of time as cycles is ultimately where a trap gets created. In consciousness, time-bound awareness is a common form of consciousness. Material-based awareness relates to time-bound awareness because we base our view of our movement through time upon physical movements that are endlessly repeating. We think endlessly, Looping repeating ways, cycles go around in circles. The earth is going around in a circle. It is going in a larger circle. The moon is going around in a circle around the earth, the earth is then going in a larger circle around the sun, and the sun is going in a larger circle around the galaxy's center. Circular movements mean that you are never going anywhere. This form of linear cyclical time trapped people in a modality of thinking, it is always going to be like this, it is never going to change, it is going to keep doing the same thing forever and ever. Our system of time is based upon the physical movements of objects and material things, so our consciousness falls into this thinking pattern. Perceptions of Time When you begin to break down perceptions of time and understand this is how people think based on our system of timekeeping. You understand how powerful a hold the entire conception of time has over the human psyche. What is the alternative to this? Let us look at some of the expressions that we use. Time is money, we equate to time and wealth. I don't have the time, we look at time as a quantity, not a quality. There is never enough time, scarcity-based thinking. The more our lives become hectic, in linear modalities of thought and consciousness, the more it seems there is less time to do things. This gives the perception that time is speeding up. Nesting of Cycles Time is divided into nested cycles. We can see that movement cycles are nested within each other, and the same patterns repeat endlessly. Nested cycles get into a person's subconscious, Painting the picture that the entire universe is like Russian dolls, like a prison you can never escape. Once you hit another wall, you go into another doll, and then get out of that one, 
and it keeps going and going in a linear cycle. Endless progression paints a picture of hopelessness in most people's minds. The inability to change gives them a sense of futility. People cannot see through this linear way of perceiving what we call time. Once you strip away that exoteric cover story, you find something deeper beneath it that relates to the self and consciousness. There is a distinction between exoteric and esoteric. Exoteric is the outward explanation or cover story. The esoteric is reserved for the initiated, and that is what occultists keep for themselves. Occultists give the exoteric cover story to others who do not know themselves or understand occult symbolism or their manipulation system. When looking at the time, we must understand primarily our conception of what time is and how our measurement of time is based. In the modern world, at least upon physical cyclical movements of objects, the Earth rotates once per day upon its axis, a physical movement. We measure the month based on the moon and its movements. It is a month based on the moon and other physical, astronomical bodies. Nesting is significant in the occult. Think of the symbol of Russian dolls, one embedded in another endlessly. This is the same concept as fractal time and is true of the universe in the broader sense. This nesting is manipulated to generate a specific condition in the human psyche. If we look at these gradations of time, we will see a specific pattern nested in them. The clock and nested cycles of time. Astrotheology, astro meaning star and theos meaning god, is a study of the movements and basing predictions upon some of the movements and positioning of these bodies. Astrotheology is the basis of a belief system rooted in the story about these gods in the sky. People have called the three great religions of the world, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, the desert sky god religions. These three religions developed out of the ancient world based upon the three cults that developed in the ancient world, the solar cult, the lunar cult, and the cult of the planets and stars, or the lesser lights. The two great lights of the heavens are the sun and the moon, then you have the more minor pinpoints of light, the stars and planets. These are given to a different religion, each given to a different gradation of timekeeping. The second hand of a clock. On the second hand, the smallest gradation we use is given to the planets. The second is dedicated to the planet Mercury. Mercury is considered the second object in our solar system, the sun being the primary object. Mercury is the first planet from the sun and has the fastest orbit, just shy of 79 days Earth days. Mercury is the fastest planet, hence in Roman and Greek mythology, Mercury was considered the messenger of the gods. The Greeks called him Hermes. Mercury is closest to the sun, and the sun is considered a bringer of life, light and energy, the embodiment of God in the solar system. The second hand is positioned around the central hub, and all the hands are in a clock position from the center. If we look at it on an analog clock, the center point represents the sun. A circle with a dot in the center is the ancient symbol of the sun. It is an archetypal symbol that has meaning inherently dwelling in the human psyche. This ancestral memory is embedded in our subconscious. We may not be aware of the symbol at a conscious level, but we know it at an intuitive fundamental level of consciousness. This archetypal symbol is the solar dot with a circle around it. The minute hand of a clock. The next hand that we come to is the minute hand. Minute is derived from one of the words for the moon in the ancient world. In the Phoenician tradition, the moon was known as Minute. The goddess of the moon, Minute, has always been a feminine aspect or presence. The sun is considered a male presence associated with the yang or masculine energy. The moon, Luna, is associated with the yen or feminine energy. So Minute is a name for the moon. The hour hand of a clock. The hour hand is named after Horus, or the sun god, and this is given to the sun hours is an anagram of Horus. 
The word horizon is the sun coming up on the zone of Horus Horus zone. The days of the week. The next measure of time is the day. A day is given to the earth. Each day is one spin of the earth upon its axis. We face the sun, turn away from it, and then it goes back, which is one day. It is a revolution, or rotation of the earth on its axis. The earth is one of the planets. We have a seven-day system in the modern world, a week. Each day of the week is given to a planet. A day is reserved for the earth, and so are days of the week. Each one is G to one of the other planets. Monday is moon day. In Spanish, lunes means moon. Tuesday may not be recognizable in English, but easier to understand in French. The name Tuesday in French is Mardi, as in Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday. The root of Mardi is Mars. Mars is the god of war. 9-11-2001 occurred on a Tuesday because they invoked the spirit of war. Wednesday in French language Wednesday is Mercredi or Mercury. Thursday is Thor's day. The Norse god Thor is associated with the planet Jupiter, as named by the Romans. Friday or Freya is one of the gods' names in the Norse tradition. Freya is a feminine day. There are two feminine days of the week, Monday, named after the moon and Friday, named after Venus. The other feminine planet in the solar system. If we take the name Friday into French, Vendredi is named after Venus. Saturday has to do with Saturn. Sunday is the Sabbath, the Savior, sun, dies and then rises. Sunday is phonetically sun dies. The sun dies and rises again to bring life to the world. The Zodiacal Cross The symbol of Christianity, a Zodiacal Cross, represents the sun upon the cross of the Zodiac. The sun is symbolically placed in the middle, with twelve houses or divisions around it, the twelve helpers of the sun, and the twelve disciples of Jesus. The month. The next cycle of time is the month, or moon th. We measure a month by illuminations of the moon. Nested cycles. The second was given to the planets, specifically Mercury. The minute was given to the moon. The hour is given to the sun, and the days of the week are given to the planets. The year, measured by our revolution around the sun, is given to the solar cult. The Great Year The Great Year is the astronomical and astrological clock of the procession of the equinoxes, which is a powerful metaphor for various aspects of the self. That is the real meaning and value of astrology. The Great Year, or the Platonic, as Plato named it, is the procession of the equinoxes. The procession is due to the Earth's 23.5 degree tilt upon its axis about its orbit around the Sun. However, the tilt is not what causes the precession. From an astronomical point of view, the Earth's pole begins to point toward a different location in the heavens and is slowly making a wobble. There is a frame of reference at work that visually makes the Earth's axis slowly drift in a counterclockwise circle. The northern pole of the Earth points to a star called the Pole Star. The Pole Star changes over a vast amount of time, approximately 25,000 years. The northern axis of rotation that we observe is making this rotational spin. For it to make one complete circle to return to the same star that it began at takes approximately 25,000 years. It is called a procession of the equinoxes, because the equinox slowly changes position relative to the constellations. It changes constellations slightly over 2,100 years, moving backwards through the zodiacal houses. There are 12 zodiac constellations Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. These ages relate to the procession of the equinoxes from these constellations. They form a timekeeping system, which is the Great or Platonic Year. 
The cycle of the sun, as it rises in the equinox, and the spring equinox in each of these houses. If you look at the rising sun on the horizon at dawn, behind the sun visually, the constellation is said to be the house that the sun is currently ruling in during that age. The sun is currently ruling in the house of Pisces. If you observe where the sun rises on the equinox, it would be coming up in the house of Pisces. In a hundred years, if we looked at the sun's rising on the spring equinox, we would see it coming up in the house of Aquarius. Another 2,100 years later, we would see it rising in the house of Capricorn on the equinox. So, if you put that all together x 12 houses, it equals 25,200 years. Entrainment The key to understanding materialistic thought is to connect it to our understanding of time measurements. The saying time is money equates time with something materialistic. Materialism is the fake proxy for balance, imagination, and harmony with nature. Our fiat currency is a debt-based monetary system. When we associate endlessly repeating physical materialistic movements of objects with time, our consciousness becomes more materialistic. This works whether we understand it or not. It does not make any difference. We are being entrained into something. The word entrainment contains entrain and meant, from the Latin meaning mind. Therefore, entrainment means getting the mind to follow along and setting up a system of leaders and followers. Time as a tool of corruption. Time is an underestimated tool of corruption. It is one that only some people are talking about because it is abstract. Time is based on symbolic thinking. Time is an illusion, like there is no such thing as money. Money and time are constructs and do not exist except in the human mind. We need to break that linear pattern of endlessly repeating cycles that go on endlessly. We need to break the psychological hold that time has over us. Thinking outside of time-bound awareness, you are always in the present moment. There is only one moment, and it is now. The future has not yet arrived, and we exist in the now. A decisive shift in awareness occurs if we bring our focal point of observation into the present moment. Eckhart Tal has a correct concept of true present moment awareness, and how we need to bring ourselves into the now. Understand that time-bound awareness sets us up for all other forms of manipulation. The book Be Here Now by Romdos also discusses this. The Mayan Concept of Time The procession of the equinoxes becomes essential when we look at different timekeeping traditions that base their ages on these large units of time or great years. For example, the Maya based their culture on the procession of the equinoxes. The Mayan calendar says that we are in a transformative time. One of their great years represents a complete transformation of some kind. Maya time was not based on the physical movements of objects, but on the movement and evolution of consciousness through what we refer to as time. Their sacred calendars are timing, not simply physical movements of planetary bodies. The Maya considered that time moves through ages of the elements, a fire cycle, an air cycle, a water cycle, an earth cycle, and an ether or spiritual cycle. Put these five together, and again you have one tremendous or platonic year. Terence McKenna produced this concept called Time Wave Zero, which he equated with the Mayan calendar. The Maya was obsessed with time because they were in tune with zero time, with the now, the present moment. Mayan shamans had a deeper understanding of time than we do today. They understood time not as a perpetual cyclical measurement of physical objects and their motions, but as a progression through consciousness, an evolution in consciousness. They understood that time was moving towards something ineffable, intangible, and non-physical. It represented a paradigm shift, a shift of the ages, a change in how humans think and interact. We are still in a transitional phase of the paradigm shift. This will move us to a higher level of awareness and consciousness. All matter is energy condensed to a slow vibration, 
we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death, life is only a dream, and we are the imagination of ourselves. Bill Hicks Being stuck in the past There is only the present moment, the now in which we operate. The past is gone, there is no point in dwelling in the past. Therefore, educating ourselves in history is critical and essential to understanding what is happening in our world. Still, the trap of living in the past is a dangerous method of mind control that many people get stuck in. People cannot let go of events and circumstances that happened, they cling to the past. Sometimes it defines them as a person. In being stuck in the past, people taint the present moment, they take away the power of the present moment. Being stuck in the future Projecting into the future is a powerful ability to look at trends already taking place and extrapolate the future based on those trends. But to get trapped in future awareness can be very dangerous. Living in future awareness leads to anxiety over the future rather than living in the present. Present moment awareness is the solution. Time as real currency. Time is the currency of spirit, a form of real money. It is an abstract idea time is something that we pay for or spend. There are two primary forms of spiritual currency, one being time and the other paying attention. We say that we spend our time doing something. We pay attention to different things. Depending on how we use that currency, we will receive different results for spending. How we spend our time will get us specific manifestations in our reality experience. This makes time one of the most critical aspects of our lives. What do we spend our time doing? Do we spend it on frivolous pursuits and self-absorbed activities? Do we spend it pursuing purely fake monetary pursuits, trying to amass material possessions? Do we spend it trying to gain influence over others or trying to accumulate power? Or do we spend it trying to educate ourselves about what is happening, both within and around us? We will get two different results depending on how we spend our time. Time is a spiritual currency. Let's focus on materialism rather than educating ourselves regarding our psyche and consciousness. We will get things in our lives that will be uncomfortable. On the other hand, if we educate ourselves to understand actual moral values in pursuit of truth, we will see that our lives will flow more effortlessly, and suffering will dissipate. We are drowning in mainly self-imposed suffering because of how people spend their time. Look at what people watch and pay attention to. Listen to the types of conversations that people have with each other. These conversations are often of no importance or significance. Certain things are true that we must pay attention to. To come to a level of discernment about what is essential, and what we should be spending our time pursuing or doing in the world. If we do not do that, we will continue to suffer and get results we do not want.